Today is the first Sunday after Christmas. The baby Jesus is finally born. Traditionally, Christmas was celebrated before this Sunday, and folks might feel a little bit tired after all the family gatherings. According to the Gregorian calendar, it's also the time to take a break, relax, and prepare for the next holiday, which is near the New Year. And people will get busy again for the family gathering, making new plans for the upcoming years, entering another cycle of life. Book of Isaiah is one of the favorite books cited in the New Testament. Most of the essential metaphors were used in the Christian Bible, and developed different kinds of theologies from this book, such as. She should bear a son, and should name him Emmanuel. And for a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Name wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. With justice and with righteousness, for evermore. An image of the suffered servant is also popular among Christians. Author of the Gospels uses this book as a prelude for John the Baptist too. We might not be too surprised that even Jesus read the book of Isaiah, chapter sixty. One, one, two, three, in the synagogue on Sabbath, and claim this is his mission on earth. Which is saying, the Lord's, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And released to the prisoner, to proclaim the year of Lord's favor, and the day of reverence of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of Praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called ox of righteousness. The planting of the Lord to display His glory. Such an important book, isn't it? Prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, has a vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Recent biblical study told us. There are three different Isaiah in this book. They represent and reflect on different contexts and challenges in their time. The scripture we read today is between the second and the third Isaiah, which is since the fall of Judah in 597 BCE and soon the exact period. The Hebrews were waiting for the day they could rebuild their Judah empire and go back to their homeland. It was not until 539 BCE, after the fall of the Neo Babylonian Empire conquered by the Persian king Cyrus, and then Darius the Great allowed those relocated people to go back home. For Hebrew. Was back to the promised land. Sixty years was a long time waiting. Most of us have known Babylonian Empire was mentioned by the first Isaiah as the agent from God to teach Israel a lesson that God has forsaken you. It was a punishment from God for Israel's unfaithfulness. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, and it was God's intention to do so. Elites, royal families, and priests 
were expelled and captured to the Babylonian Empire. But now, the third Isaiah, as the scripture said today, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, be covered with the garments of salvation, the robe of righteousness. The time of suffering has passed, and God has shown mercy. Right now, be the collective voices of Jerusalem, this city where the temple was located, that will lead to the meaning of God's temple will be restored with glory under the permission of the Persian Empire. Jerusalem is now the faithful city, Zion, and no longer unfaithful. I here might be the prophet, the third Isaiah, then he will be the representative of the Hebrews to give thanks to God for God's unconditional salvation. After three generations of suffering, they cannot do anything about it. No temple to worship, no place to repent, no institutionalized entity to do justice or walk on the path God has shown. That leads to the meaning that God's righteousness has been fulfilled by the 60 years suffering. The kingdom of Judah could be restored, and this is beyond Hebrew's control. I here might be the Persian king Cyrus, who was the anointed one who proclaimed the good news that the enemy Babylonian Empire was destroyed, or I here could be the Persian king Darius, who is the other anointed one who released the Hebrew from the captivity and grant them to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. The Hebrew was still under the shade of another colonial empire, and this one even stronger. Anything should obey and worship the king of kings is the title of Persian emperors. If we use intertextual readings with Psalm and the first Isaiah, we will come up with the idea that it will be the kingdom of David, the whole Israel, that will be restored and vindicated by God. However, in the third prophet Isaiah's mind, it's only Judah, the southern kingdom only, that will be restored and vindicated. The joy here is granted. Like the happy marriage, the unfaithful woman, Jerusalem, is now a beloved bride with jewels, the crown of beauty, the restored relationship between God the groom, and the bride, the collective of Jerusalem. And these restorations will be recognized by all the nations and kings. A new name will be given directly from God. We can also try to understand this scripture from a Christian's perspective. I, speaking here, might be Jesus the Christ. Like Augustine has mentioned, the early father in the Christian history and also the essential Christian theologian. He claimed Christ is preaching himself in clothing Christ. God, the Father, in a sense, adorned himself. This scripture is a mystery of the Trinity. Martin Luther continued this thought and treated this book Book Isaiah here dressing as a spiritual kingdom of Christ. The rise and the restoration of Jerusalem are the lights in the gospel against the darkness, which could also attract the nation, remove all the restrictions of the synagogue, and extend to the Gentiles. And that leads to Jesus 
being the Christ, the King, the Messiah, and the Anointed One. As Luther's famous statement, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, there is a kingdom of Christ. However, John Calvin had lots of arguments against this method of allegory used by both Augustine and Luther. In Calvin's perspective, for the church, the glory of government, salvation, and righteousness are invisible. But the church people need to have faith to comprehend those heavenly and invisible things. Theologians hold different viewpoints concerning the history fact, interpretations across history, theologian, theolo- theologies they believe, and the context they encountered. I learned some of those from a book. The struggle to understand Isaiah as Christian scripture, written by Brevard S. Charles. And I believe my following interpretation of this scripture might be quite different than some of us today at our church. This year, 2021, is another year of challenges. Since 2019, COVID-19 has taken 5 million lives from us globally. In the United States, the number means we lost 800,000 of our brothers, sisters, and siblings. In the United States, there are three different vaccines to help us against the virus, if we call it darkness. We are getting a booster now. However, the fully vaccinated rate is still 60% for a long time. Delta variation is still here, but Omicron is now the dominating among the new cases. A 17-year-old person from Illinois gunshot two other people and wounded one in Wisconsin. He was sentenced not guilty. A 24-year-old UFC graduate young man who was gunshot by another 18-year-old person in Hyde Park several weeks ago. On the same day, a gang-related shootings around our church corner happened. There has been 783 homicides in city of Chicago, 10% more than last year, and an additional 3,592 non-fatal shooting victims this year so far. 115,000 people got shot, and 39,000 of them died this year in the United States. How much longer that we should wait for a day of relief? Why do we have to suffer? People have been seeking salvation and righteousness for a long time, especially the Christians. We Christians love to identify the saviors for our own benefit. Look at what's happening in the history. In this country, Christians also crown different politicians as their own saviors. Or the solution for various issues is, it did not always work out well. We behave just like different Isaiah. Your king was not my king. Your restored kingdom is not mine. We are still struggling under the shade, under the shadow of Black Lives Matter, white supremacy, the combination of Christianity, nationalism, and patriotism. We are not going anywhere. Where is the collective of Jerusalem in our context? 
who will be the anointed one we should wait for? What is the salvation to come? How is the righteousness to be achieved? So we Christians should ask, especially the newborn king is here with us already. What could we do from here? There are some differences between ours and Isaiah's context. We still have a place to assemble, worship, and do good to the community. We get some opportunity and autonomy. Book of Isaiah provides us with an essential clue. For us, the earth bring forth its suits, and us garden causes what is sown in it and sprout out. As the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 11, it seems that if, if we keep spreading the seeds, it is God who will spring them up and people will seed it. In the late summer this year, Many of us join the long planting, and we do see the differences. Not only do we got a greener lawn on the 53rd Street, but also a collective work from our community, our church folks, Boy and Girl Scout, and our neighbors. If you walk by the church today, you might question, What? Are you kidding me? I see no leaves but dry branches right now, even the lawn is not so green. We Christians are very good at waiting and realizing the cycle of life, but we are not lazy. Things might not be, things might be invisible at this point. With all the effort we put and with faith we hold, as John Calvin has encouraged us, we should see the invisible and heavenly things, not only in our vision, but also in our context. People around us will recognize those things and realize, oh, those Christians do have God. If you are still uncertain about it, especially our lawn, stay longer by the lawn, the sparrows, are already having fun there, and they have shown us what's under the ground. The soil represents an unappreciable possibility and fertility right here on our lawn, around our church. Among us, in the first Corinthians, I planned Apollo's water but God gave the growth, for we are God's servant, working together, you are God's field, God's building. What are the seeds that you are going to spread in this garden? What kind of righteousness, praise, and joy you are expecting? God won't keep silent, we will not rest. People will know the new name given by God through the seed and what has grown on our garden. Amen.